All right, YouTube, what's going on? It's Mesa back at it with some Destiny 2. All right, guys, we got a couple of things to cover today, including the cancellation of tomorrow's stream for Curse of Osiris. However, I will have some new content to show you guys as another embargo will lift at 3 p.m. tomorrow Eastern, where I could show you guys some new stuff when I went to Bungie Studios, courtesy of Activision, to play and get hands on time with Curse of Osiris. And you might want to stick around to the end because I just want to touch on briefly how I really feel about what's going on in this community, in this game, and so forth. But anyway, all right, so Bungie, well, Deej, put out a statement regarding tomorrow. So, he says, tomorrow we had planned to conduct the final stream prior to the launch of Curse of Osiris to show off some of the weapons and armor the expansion includes. Instead, we are investing all of our efforts into delivering some higher priority information about Destiny 2. You'll hear from the studio leadership about their assessment of Destiny. They'll talk about our goals for the game going forward, and you'll also learn about how we're reacting to your feedback with some game updates that will arrive in the next few weeks. That will appear in a Bungie blog on Wednesday tomorrow. So here's what I have planned for tomorrow. So 3 p.m., you're going to get some new content for me as the final embargo lifts where I get to show you some new stuff. And one particular legendary that is, um, how do I word this without saying, uh, without going too in-depth. But let's just say one of my favorite legendaries is sort of coming back from Destiny 1. It's not exactly the same weapon, different name, different everything. But uh, if you knew me from my Arms Day videos, you know I have one particular weapon I was a big fan of and talked about nonstop. Well, a weapon that's very similar to that particular weapon. I know I'm being kind of dodgy around this. Uh, I got to play with and use, and you'll see tomorrow. The other thing I want to do tomorrow is when this blog goes live, you know what? I'm just going to fire up the stream, and we can go through it together. I got a feeling it's going to be a big one, and there's a lot of things that need to be addressed that we all want as a community from Destiny 2 to make it a better game. Now, what I'm hoping on is some of that includes the things that Christopher Barrett laundry listed a few weeks ago. I know I keep referencing that, but hey, his list, they're, they're all things that I would like to see happen to Destiny 2. Um, let's let's set our expectations properly, guys. Do we really think everything's going to be fixed overnight? More than likely, no. If I look back to Destiny 1, Destiny 1 had a brutal first year and got better over time. When I think about the first DLC, the uh, Dark Below, I had, I think, five story missions, one strike, and then the other strike was a PSN exclusive, some new weapons and armor, and a raid that is, well, Crota's End was one of my favorite raids because I just, I love the moon, I love the hive, I love the end, I love the music, but it was a short raid compared to everything else. And I just kind of bring that up for the fact that I know Curse of Osiris, when I compare it to Destiny 1's first expansion, it's a lot bigger. Now, does that really make a difference? No, I'm just kind of pointing it out to, if I think about when the Dark Below, the first DLC came out, it was tiny, okay, really short. Uh, Curse of Osiris, from playing the entire campaign, and uh, as well as a host of other activities, it's definitely a lot bigger than the Dark Below. Now, here's the end, and uh, the hashtag made it to the end. Leave me that in the comments section if you made it to the end. Let's talk about a few things. So, how do you really feel about all this stuff? And uh, why am I either not saying things, why am I silent, or why am I always positive all the time? Well, part of it is personal. You know, straight up, guys, I... How do I say this? Okay, I had some really rough times in my life and a pretty brutal childhood. And in my household, the glass was always half empty. So in my adult life, I never look at anything half empty. I always look at everything half full. How can it get better? And things will get better. Um, that's just the way I live my life, guys. So when it comes to Destiny 2, yeah, sure, there's tons of things I want changed. You know, people think that uh, I just love everything they throw at us. No, I mean, listen, I brought up multiple times. I don't like static rolls. I miss the grind of random rolls. I think that was a big change that I, I don't like. And was not. A, I, look, I've said that numerous times. But, you know, th th there's ways to go about saying it. I mean, like, just trashing or trashing me for not saying anything. You know, like, that's another thing, too. And I know I'm kind of off on a tangent here, but that's what it's like when you make unscripted videos. But... You know, you guys come, well, not all of you, but when people come at me with a pitchfork, you know, you make it like I could just make a quick phone call to Bungie and say, hey, uh, you need to go back to random rolls. It, it, it doesn't work like that. And if you want my opinion on the whole throttling of XP and everything, go listen to Guardian Radio last night. I pretty much made all of my thoughts quite apparent on last night's episode. But just in general, uh, and of course, I get called a Bungie shill all the time. And yeah, I'll be frank. Listen, I've been to nine capture events. Um, I'm friends with a bunch of those guys at Bungie as well as have a, a really good relationship with Activision. So when it comes to criticizing Bungie, you know how I do it? I talk to them personally about it in private. I don't air it out to get views. All right. I know that's kind of the cliche right now or what's what 
people are really cashing in on views right now and money is the whole bashing of studios thing. And I get it. It gets them a lot of money, gets them a lot of views. But when it comes to criticisms or things I want changed in Destiny, I talk to the guys at Bungie. When I went to the capture event, I, I, I had a, some pretty long conversations with Dave Matthews and even Sam and stuff about things that I don't like in the game or things I'd like to see improved. But, you know, I don't air it out in public. Um, that's just not me. You know, what's the point of me making a video and then hoping they watch it to make things change? No, I'll DM them. I'll talk to them in person when I go to a capture event and say, hey, you know, this is something that I hear in my comment section all the time that I think needs changing. You know, um, I was doing, uh, I played the raid a couple of times with actually one of the raid designers and I think the gentleman who created the European Dead Zone. And we had some great conversations, you know, through the raid um, about things things that I think could be improved, you know, things that like things that work and things that don't work. So I'd rather go to the source than just air it out in a video to get views and money. You know what I mean? For me, um, if I just think back to the days when I was in sales and I had, you know, sold products, medical devices, uh, capital equipment, and let's make no mistake about it. Destiny 2 is a product. Um, Feedback that's really nasty and just with the pitchforks out, the torches and everything, usually got unnoticed by the company. But when you provide constructive criticism and, you know, personal one on one, say, hey, listen, you know, this is not working in your product. This needs to be improved. You know, we would listen and we would make changes. But uh, I don't know, guys, I'm going off on a rant here. It's, it's been pretty weird lately, uh, especially on Twitter the last couple of days. I mean, the pitchforks are out and. You know, we'll see what happens in the blog post tomorrow. I'll fire up the stream. We'll read through it. We'll go through it. We'll talk about things. And hopefully we'll see some changes for the better. Um, if everyone's expecting a quick band-aid and just an insta fix, probably not going to happen. But if it's some steps in the right direction, it goes back to the way I live my life. And that is the glass is always half full. Things will get better. And frankly, I've been enjoying this downtime. I know everyone's on their social crusade of boycotting EA, but man, I love Star Wars Battlefront. I play Destiny 2 every day, not as much as I used to. I do the raids, just do my regular milestones and stuff, but man, Star Wars Battlefront multiplayer, completely addicted to it. I'm almost up to, I think, level 20, but then again, people want to come after me just because I like a game that they don't agree what the company does, and that's cool. You have your opinion, but don't tell me not to play a game just because you don't agree with what the company did, and listen, I... Do you think I'm happy with what they did with microtransactions and the loot boxes from EA? No, it was, it was terrible. I mean, the DLC for Star Wars Battlefront's free, so they got to somehow make their money. But at the same time, it's a fun game. I'm going to play it. I've been playing uh, World War II multiplayer, too, also. Love that game. A lot of fun. Anyway, if you made it to the end, do me a favor. Hashtag made it to the end. Drop a like in this video only if you see fit. Follow me on the Twitter, at MesaShawn. Check out my stream. Usually and always on YouTube. And that's it. I'm out of here like Vladimir. <laughs>